my reflection paper, I looked at the Mad Men clothing line at Banana Republic. In 2011, Banana Republic released a clothing line based on the TV show with the same name. The TV show was on AMC from 2007 to 2015. Though it had a, a small viewership, it had a lot of critical reviews. It was set in 1960s New York City at an ad agency. The protagonist of the show was Don Draper, and he was a very confident man. He was the creative director for the ad agency. Don Draper was also, like many of the men of the early 1960s, a man who took advantage of the pre-feminist and pre-civil rights era. He was portrayed as a womanizer. Very rarely in the show do we see any minorities, and when they're in the show, they're portrayed in a very negative light. It's very interesting that a lot of the mores uh, and the social norms of the early 1960s are also on display in this clothing line and the ads for it. And these ads appeared in um, magazines that targeted affluent readers. Some of the themes that I discovered when I looked at the ads, I noticed three things, but uh, one of the main things that stuck out in my mind is the past is a commodity. Uh, there's the sociologist John Baudrillard, and he says that the way that we are nostalgic about the past is through images. So we use images to connect with the past, but we really don't connect with the past itself, but we connect with this imagined past through images. We see this same phenomenon taking place in the ads for Banana Republic. By purchasing the clothes featured in this series, one is able to go back in time. Not actually going back to an actual New York City, but living in and pretending to be part of the early 1960s culture. One of the other critiques of just capitalism in general and of the show is that it sort of makes living in the past a fetish or a commodity. It's something that can be bought and sold. That carries over into the fashion line itself. Uh, now, if someone is nostalgic about an imagined past, they can actually purchase the clothes and they can be part of that culture. Another recurring theme is that of women as accessories. There are a lot of um, critiques of the way that women are treated on the series. Um, some of them are, are relatively positive, that it's saying that it, it kind of contrasts the way women were treated then versus how we expect women to be treated now. Some critiques looked at the irony of the show. Being that it was filmed between 2007 and 2011, well after the second wave of feminism, a lot of people look at the show as kind of making light of uh, the progress that's been made. Uh, even though the show takes place between the years of 1960 and 1968, there's relatively little mention of the second wave of feminism that was going on, even though there are ample references to like John F. Kennedy. So within the TV show and within the clothing line, there's a lot of scenes where women are treated as accessories. When I was looking at the clothing line, uh, you see um, pictures of men and women together, or just women, or just men. Whenever men and women are pictured together, the women are always in a, a deferential pose. So we see, like, looking at this image, that the woman is wrapped around the man. He's standing there kind of aloof, and she's staring at his figure. She's not actually staring at his eyes. Uh, so one of the things that this a TV show portrays, and the clothing line as well, is the idea that women are just accessories for men. They're there to complement them, kind of like a tie or a watch that they may have. Another theme that I noticed in the TV show, but particularly the ad, is this myth of unlimited mobility. One of the biggest myths of capitalism is the idea of the self-made man, so that anyone can be whoever they want to be, uh, you can rise to whatever level you want to rise to in society. There's a lot of this aspirations that is caught up in this clothing line. Uh, one ad in particular showed an image of Don Draper on the left, and on the right it has an empty suit. It kind of has a template of success on the left. On the right there's an empty suit that you can wear. And if you look at the bottom of the ad, you'll even see a blurb that says, Made with high-twist Italian yarn for wrinkle resistance. Our most popular fit, perfectly tailored for demanding executives and aspiring ones. So the idea behind that is that anyone can ascribe 
to be like Don Draper. Uh, they can be at the top of social mobility. It's, it's funny, however, uh, in these ads for the Mad Men clothing line, uh, you don't see anyone who doesn't look like an ideal person. Uh, you see white men and white women. You don't see any people of color. You don't see differently able people. You don't see people who um, have less than ideal body types. Even though anyone can make it, as capitalism would have you to believe, there are also people that because of their uh, attributes, they, they're the ones who always make it to the top. And that's one of the capitalist values that this clothing line is selling, and it's uh, very apparent in the ads. I have a reference page here, some of the commentaries that I read kind of paraphrase them through this presentation. And finally, the background music. Uh, this is actually the theme song of Mad Men.